Hey guys, today we're going to learn how to do pretty fatal errors in PHP. Basically, errors that look really nice instead of having the normal white page black text. Uh, this trick uh, comes from a guy I met at WWDC last week, uh, Eric Bolins from UCLA. So basically, what we're going to do is, let's take a look at what an error looks like. So we're just going to put some random text in a PHP file, which should cause an error. So we will come to our page and refresh, and we get this error. If you don't get this, that's because your um, you need to go to your error your include file or whatever and put display errors on. So like if you're just getting a 404 or a 500 error like this, then you need to turn you need to any set and set display errors to one. Okay, so this is what our normal PHP errors look like, and everyone hates them. And if you don't hide them on your website, your customers see them too when you have errors. So we want, th so sometimes there are errors, and we want to keep them there. If well, we don't want them there at all, obviously. But but if they do happen to happen, we're going to display them in a nice, pretty way. So let's take a look at how to do that. There's a couple tricks involved. First and foremost, we're going to uh, well, first to note is that this trick only works if, if you're using PHP 5.2, you need to set your time zone, okay? If you're using 5.3, you don't need to do this, but if you're using 5.2, you do. Okay, moving on. So the, the process is we're going to inject a piece of code in our HT access file, PHP value, which basically lets us set some of the PHP INI information. We're going to auto prepend a file called shutdown.php. And what this is going to do is after execution, it's going to include this PHP file. Okay, so after execution, it's going to include this file. This would work the exact same way if if we went to the top of our index file and included our shutdown.php page right at the top. It would be the exact same shutdown. It, this this would do the exact same thing. But we are going to leave that out for now and go ahead and use the HT access method of using this line. So obviously we need to shut down that PHP page, which we have right here. But just to note as well, if you're running PHP as an Apache module, this will work just fine. But if you're running PHP uh, as the as a CLI or, at, or just installed on Unix, then you actually can't do this and you have to put this piece of code in your PHP.ini file. Okay, all little caveats out of the way. We have this, which basically attaches shutdown.php. So if we actually open shutdown.php, and just so you know where it is, it's actually, so here's HT access, and so here's over here, here's our HT access file, and here is shutdown.php. They're in, next to each other, okay? So if I just say echo here, and save, and now I refresh, hey look, I have a message out on our error page. Really cool. So, what do we want to have happen? Basically, what we need to do is use a special function called register, register, can I spell that? Register shutdown function. Basically, when execution fails, it's going to call whatever function I have passed in here. We're going to call it shutdown handler. Okay? That will call this function, function shutdown handler whenever execution fails. Okay, so we can say echo execution has failed. Save and refresh. Now the error comes in after the parse error. Okay, because it got added and executed after it had failed. Okay, which is what we want to have happen. So now we have a function being called when our script has failed. So the first thing that we need to do is get the last error. <clears throat> okay. So to get the last error, we're going to say error equals, and, and funny enough, it's called error last, or error get last. Okay? Funny, huh? So if we var dump this error, we get, hey, a bunch of shit. Let's uh, pretty that so we can see what it is. So we're going to echo pre to kind of format it. So this gives us a type, a message, a file, and a line number. All the stuff that this does. So we've got syntax error, well we got we got a parse error which is our type, we got our message which is here, we've got our file and our line. Okay, but it just spits it all out like this. So we, need, we actually need to hide this part. We, we don't want this to show anymore. 
So let's go back to our INI sets and turn any set off now. And now we refresh, and now we just have our error. See, their error is gone now, and we just have our pretty error. So you could leave it like this, but uh, we're actually going to make it a little prettier. Um, and note, it's still going to call when it fails. So let's not, so just before we continue, let's actually remove our error and see what happens just before we keep going. So we'll refresh. You can see it says no. We're basically echoing every time with this appended file, even though there's no error. So we don't want to do that. So what we, what we want to actually do is you would want to test for nullness, right? So we want to say, it, like, you want to kind of do if not is null error and then do your code in here, like this. Save and refresh, and now it won't show. And if I fail, bleh, it fails. And it fails with our error, okay? This is one way, uh, where are we at? This is one way to do it. Another way to do it is to kind of do a, a cool, uh, we could do all this in one line by, by saying, uh, and you don't have to be crazy like this, but you can say if false equals 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 three equal signs meaning we're comparing not only value but by type is null and then we're actually going to set error because you're allowed to set things this way again this is all a shortcut error get last boom 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 oops and put our stuff in there again this is all shortcuts so you don't have to do these just shortcuts and refresh ta da okay so now we've got our basic skeleton for handling errors ourselves instead of letting the system do it. This is pretty cool. Um, another trick you can do is because we've got an array, you could, so let's say we just wanted the message. You would have to do message, and that would just give us that. But something you could do is you could actually use the extract function. So I would say extract error, and then instead of saying error message, I could just say message. It actually turns those keys into variables. And now I've got the same result. So you don't have to do this. This is, again, just another shortcut. But it's kind of cool to show you that that turns that associative array into a bunch of variables that I can use. And why am I, why is it, you think it's cool to put into a bunch of variables? Because we're going to write some code now. We're going to write some HTML to actually prettify this up. So the way we're going to do this is once we have our extract, okay, um, we are going to close PHP, and then later we'll, o we'll open it again. Why are we doing that? Because we're going to have a bunch of code in here. We're going to have a bunch of CSS and HTML, so I don't want to put it all in quotes. So we actually can do this here. So I'm going to uh, drop in a giant style sheet that I already made that I know is going to make it look extremely pretty. Boom. So here's the style sheet. And then we actually need an HTML markup now. And so we don't have any body. We don't have any HTML structure. So let's actually add that. So body, we have a div, we've got an h1 that says fatal error, we've got a class that's center box, and we've got error, file, line, and then we got the stuff here. And then I just have a little message that says, if you're not the webmaster, ignore this. Save and refresh. And now, this is what my pretty error message looks like. So if a user is browsing my site and this is normally what they see, and they're browsing the site, they're going, okay, cool, I'm excited about this, awesome, and we go back, okay, great, let's say they find a page that has an error on it, when they get that error, they now get a very nice looking error page that still gives us the right information, and instead of that stupid white screen. You could go even further with this and actually send an email to the webmaster with the error, so anytime someone gets an email, or every time someone gets an error, you could get an email. You could take it even farther than that and make a database entry and say any time you get an error, store it in the database. Okay? So there's actually lots of stuff you could do at this point, but this is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, it's showing pretty errors, what it looks like, and uh, feel free to steal my CSS if you want, but this is just a really cool uh, trick, and thanks, Eric, for this, uh, this trick.